You're watching Telecom TV for Mobile World Congress 2018 in Barcelona. And welcome to our panel discussion on bringing zero touch automation to 5G networks. Now the concept of zero touch is becoming increasingly important as the industry develops its virtualized network offerings to support 5G deployments. And joining me to discuss the issues I have on my immediate left, Chandres Ruparo of Hello. Intel. We have Gabriele Di Piazza from VMware. Okay. Francisco Javier Ramon Zaguero of Telefonica. Hi. And Kevin Chatskama from Dell EMC. Kevin, thanks very much. And all of you, thanks for joining us today. Um, Thank you. What I'd like to, to start with is the whole concept of zero touch. Can we be absolutely clear as to what we mean by zero touch? Gabriel, how about you want to oh, start with this one? Pick <laughs> me first. Yes, please. Uh, uh, <laughs> very wide question. I think mm. at the end of the day, zero touch is uh, a very wide concept. I would like it's really a process, right? Mm. Um, it will eventually lead from taking an order all the way to delivering a service. But I think this problem gets disassembled into multiple layers, right? How do you mm. uh, go down into the uh, different layers in the network? And with networks changing and evolving, uh, gets even more complex over time as uh, the components is disassembling into pieces and mm. multiple clouds and, and, and applications. So, mm. um, again, let me stop here because uh, I think there's way more to talk about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, just as uh, Gabriele mentioned, if you look at uh, the whole planning process to deployment, right, day zero, day one, day two, you're mm. going from planning to uh, activation of the service and deployment all the way to in-service management. Uh, zero touch, uh, the way you know, I conceptualize it and, and I guess uh, in discussions with the industry is really about minimizing human intervention. So you are sort of reducing human error, but not only that, introducing a level of agility that, that addresses the SLA and the, and the new age application and service requirements. And, and Kevin, um, you know, this all leads to automation and the importance of, of automation. Why, why are we seeing this, this whole move to automation as being so important? Yeah, I think uh, I was actually going to bring that up as next topic of conversation mm -hmm. anyway. You know, when, when we think about the, the automation area, what we're seeing, uh, uh, it, first off, the terminology has become very overloaded in the industry. We're seeing a lot of interest in automating all these tasks that have tradi traditionally be been done manually, mm -hmm. right? So taking scripts and manual scripts that were originally designed to automate the deployment and provisioning of infrastructure, turning that into capabilities for that to happen automatically. We see it on the fault management and monitoring and starting to close the loop. When we see something, resolve it, right? And I think it even extends further as we start to talk about machine learning and, and automa uh, artificial intelligence mm. to really get to the point where there's almost no manual intervention. So mm. if we think about automation, the first layer of this, it's really about the provisioning management of the infrastructure mm. without human intervention. Mm. And then when we talk about AI and ML, it's now this layer above it that takes out the decision logic as well and it automates the decision processes as well. Yeah. And, and Francisco, you know, you're, you're surrounded by three vendors here. You're, you're, you're the sole yeah. service provider of our discussion. I'm comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you know, why is it important to you? How is, how is it helping your business? Yeah, I mean, I mean the in the transition of, of the new type of networks that we are, we are going, I mean, if you if you think of it, I mean, if you are virtualizing your network, actually you have an explosion of the composition of subcomponents. Uh, so it's, n it's no longer the, the case of operating some boxes that are identified that you can inventory. It. It's no longer feasible. And you actually, if you follow the same procedure that you traditionally follow in that explosion of components in, in massive deployments, uh, you, you you would be unable to to handle that in a ma in a manual manner or a semi-automated manner. So here is is the automation when it comes to the rescue. Uh, I mean, in in your in otherwise you can't afford not even exploiting the the, the, the the potential that a virtual environment will give you or all the the construct that the slicing will give you or whatever. But also that you will be even unable to do the same thing that you are doing today with the new paradigm. So it would be. It's, it's not a choice, it's actually a must in order to, to, to be able to, to deploy massively uh, that new type of networks and also get uh, some um, real benefit of it. It's not about uh, removing the human being in the operation of the equation, it's about letting them focus on what uh, uh, will add value now instead of that explosion of uh, subcomponents and try to figure out every time in a repeated way. Okay. 
I, uh, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, you, you mentioned change a number of times, right? And I think one thing that we've learned in this industry is that change is inevitable, and we've gotten used to, I think, accepting and learning how to adapt to change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think what's new for, for, for this industry at the moment is a couple of things. One, the rate of change, right? How quickly con customer and consumer mm -hmm. expectations are changing. How quickly there's new options in the open source community and vendor community to select different technologies, right? And, and because the rate of change has accelerated to such a great mm -hmm. degree, you're absolutely right. Doing things the way we've always done them is just not an option. Yeah. I was going to pick on the same thing, so try to focus on uh, automation in a new world of networks going in uh, using the old paradigm uh, will be a mistake. Uh, in fact, I think that uh, a big part of this is not so much as it, we discuss a lot about technology transformation, application decomposition, new networks and topologies and so forth, but there's a big aspect in uh, people processes uh, uh, operations. So uh, think of the uh, skills required, the retraining required, and effectively uh, uh, two worlds coming together, the worlds of IT and cloud and the worlds of networks. Uh, uh, you know, think of the operations aspect and the provisions aspect becoming uh, very different uh, from a process perspective. So this will require a change in the skills uh, in the service provider space. Mm -hmm. In fact, I may just add a few things. So, so I guess exactly to your point earlier that it's not an option. It, it, is, it is something that you have to do in order to adapt to the new network. In 5G world, you cannot be hard-coded. And this is a very simple example. If you look at network slicing, you are trying to set up and tear down a, a new SLA structure, a complete network, and, and you can't do that if it's not automated. It's, it's really the agility with which you implement it. Mm -hmm. uh, but, and, and, and to your point, Gabrielle, the, it's, it's really two worlds coming together, but it's not that the automation is a new concept. It is being implemented with the cloud service providers today, but it is a little bit siloed, and, and it's, it's not something where you have a convergence, and that's the reason why we have Etsy ISG yep. uh, for zero-touch uh, network and service management, mm -hmm. uh, which we have set up, and, I, and, and on the other side of the standards that we are trying to set up here. So it's really how you bring these together to really make it a reality. Yeah, I th and I think you, know, you, you mentioned that it exists today. I think generally that's true, but the way it exists is what's changing, right? Today it exists in maintenance windows, it exists in fixed time periods where I can roll out new capabilities and new services, and those fixed time periods are going to shrink very rapidly, and the number of them is going to grow very quickly across uh, the, the calendar year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do, how do we get all this working? Because we've mentioned, we mentioned the, uh, the, the standards aspect, we mentioned people and processes has been so important, we mentioned what the, the cloud scale companies uh, and web scale companies can, can, can offer. How do you ensure this all works? And is, are we talking like new collaborations, new ecosystems required to, to, to achieve this? So, uh, yeah. uh, to go back to my earlier point, I think one is really driving convergence. And this is where, you know, Intel sort of has been contributing as it does with NFV, Mano, and, and this is the next logical step. Uh, so, uh, last year, uh, we worked very closely with Telefonica, with, um, uh, with Dodge Telecom, and a, and a number of partners uh, to pull together this IS and launch ISG within Etsy uh, for zero touch network and service management. Uh, and now it has grown to you know 40 plus members. So first, everybody coming together to figure out like, what are the stand what are the requirements that we all agree to, mm -hmm. and and secondly, at the same time, you have to sort of harness the ecosystem capabilities. So if you have uh, you know organizational structural changes that you need and, and you need consulting around that, uh, who are the experts that you can bring to bear? And and working together to sort of plot this puzzle will be very critical. But more importantly, I think the, the support of operator community will be will yep. be extremely important. Yeah, I agree. In fact, uh, funny enough, somebody this morning asked me, well, as technology moves on and uh, networks are becoming simpler, mm. right? I say, well, yep. uh, in, <laughs> <laughs> in reality, uh, <laughs> I think we are uh, going to uh, see an additional layer of complexity before simplification. So this would require way more collaboration. Yep. Uh, standards bodies, absolutely but also between vendor and uh, operator community. I completely agree with you here. I mean, operators, uh, I actually seen operators uh, just in these last two years, way more active, sure. way more active than in the past, mm. where you, know, you could argue some of the uh, standards bodies or uh, communities being very vendor centric. Now we see very clear requirements by carriers. This will help drive and 
uh, uh, clarify uh, how to how to proceed and move forward. Yeah, I can't agree more. I mean, the, 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 the problem that we that we have with all these uh, changes or the in transformation process is that you try to boil the oceans. I mean, there are so many components, there are so many cool things around that it's quite easy to, 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 to lose the focus. I mean, and, and I think that uh, one part of, uh, of this, this journey that you described pretty well, it's, it's not uh, just a vision, it's, it's a journey, mm. uh, is that it requires uh, creating solid foundations gradually. And that uh, the, the role of the service provider is key. I mean, to decide what it works in practice for them, what it doesn't work in practice for them, and iterate and pivot. Uh, I, I think that, that and that can only happen in a in a in a in a place of collaboration. It, it can happen in in a in a in a waterfall like thing with uh, RFQ process and, and try to learn from there. It's yeah, you know, I think if, if we think about the, the entire history of communication service providers, communication service providers have always had a very strong voice in terms of, uh, of providing requirements back into the industry. But historically, the way that has been done is in documented words to vendors, and vendors were expected to implement and interpret what those words meant. I think what's really changed in the industry is that the operator voice is coming out in open source communities and it's no longer just an expression of what they want to see, it's a demonstration and it's code that's a lot harder to, uh, that, is, that is not interpretive. This is how we want it to work, this is the APIs that we want to see, this is how we want to see it exposed and we expect you to conform to these standards. Yeah. And I think technology yeah. helps because moving from a siloed proprietary network mm -hmm. uh, with infusion of IT technology, it actually allows to uh, have a better, you know, even technology collaboration. Mm -hmm. I think the advancements in technologies and uh, is something that will, will actually help in this process. Mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, this technology collaboration will become even more important as we try and integrate um, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and big data into it. A few things to consider here, right? So, so I mean, this is an area again. You know, uh, Intel can contribute in terms of uh, data science and, uh, and and platform technologies. But, but what is important to understand is that any application of these new technologies, uh, even if you were to go trial first and then make improvisation slowly, you have to have prior to that quality data. So your infrastructure has to be able to deliver that quality data, otherwise you cannot apply uh, th these, these competencies into it that effectively, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that is where I think the first step from the operator community will be is like, can the infrastructure be made ready so that the data is right and then we are able to uh, implement all of these. But it will be a, a small step effort where mm -hmm. it's not just one time download to the vendor, it's really about collaboration, together Absolutely. working, and then improvising with every step. Absolutely, and, yeah, that, and that's yeah. part of extending the agile development process that, that all of us as vendors use internally out into the ecosystem, right? And starting with minimal viable product and continuing to iterate on that as an industry as a whole. Uh, and I think that you know when, when we talk to service providers, and maybe you can comment on this, you know, the expectation is no longer that we can deliver the entire stack or that we have all the capabilities, but instead that we're open collaborative members of a broader ecosystem of partners that the service providers want to see. Well, the, uh, the expectation is that uh, all the requirements are met, right? But <laughs> 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 gradually, <laughs> and we and we and we are part of the process. So we we yeah. make re realistic uh, assumptions about what we can expect at each of these phases. Sure. And I think that it's, it's, I, I fully agree. I mean, we we were discussing about the general framework that the specs provide at the same time the open source, the role that the open source plays. That is really important, and I think that in, in, yeah. in that case, uh, uh, in, in Telefonica, we have been true believers of that, that both works can be conciliated. I mean, the way that you need to evolve in the finer de in details and iterate probably is not that easy to follow in a spec, but the spec provides a, a, a very good framework for doing yeah. the things and, and understanding, at least putting a label on what is the function that they're looking for, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I fully agree with you, and I think that there some basic foundations need to be, need, need to be agreed. Uh, and then iterate on that and, and, and start being in from small mm. to something that is more complex gradually. Mm. So. We, we are running out of time unfortunately, but a final word, we, we started this discussion looking at bringing zero touch automation to 5G networks. For, for service providers who, who, who are taking this 5G journey, you know, briefly if I can ask you all, you know, how critical is it that they fully understand zero touch and implement zero touch? Uh, how well does the service provider and the community understand? Yes, and how critical is it for them? It, it's. It's extremely critical, as we all agree. Uh, it is preparation. In, in, again, in the 5G world, you can be hard-coded, mm. right? But the, the, the critical piece here is the, the, the other question that you asked. Do we really understand it? Mm. And I think that is where 
just in getting the requirements in place and making sure that we all understand what it means is going to be a collaboration and community effort. I don't think that there is a clear cut answer to it today. Uh, there is a lot of work to be done uh, and I'm and I'm very optimistic that the ISG formed uh, will start making headway on that front. Gabriele. Well, I think again, uh, there is a good understanding, gap between understanding and execution. I think it's uh, uh, still there. Uh, my, my, let's say, recommendation final word would be we are living in the world of software definition. So, uh, and uh, if you want to execute on this, we will need to start thinking that way. So, apply maybe some different methodologies that have been applied in the past. Mm. Francisco, brief final word from yourself. Uh, yeah, I, I think that this is uh, inevitable. Uh, mm. And we either do it uh, now or do it later. Mm. But uh, if we want to get uh, the most in terms of the benefits that the new technologies that are available in terms of business and in terms of uh, opportunities for, for the people, for real, at that scale can offer, uh, we, we need to be able to automate that successfully. Great. And Kevin? And I, I think it's not a matter of it, if, it's a matter of when and how, uh, and how quickly and how much. Right, I think you know. For when we live only in a technology bubble, uh, <laughs> it's easy to say that the technology is very complex. But if we then step outside the technology bubble and think about the impacts of that IT transformation on workforce and process, it is that much more complex because now you're dealing with people and trying mm -hmm. to evolve the skill sets of those people into those new processes. Mm -hmm. So right. I think it's going to continue to take some time. Look, I'm afraid that's all the time we we have. Um, I'd like to thank our guests for participating in the panel today. And I'd also like to thank our sponsors, VMware and Intel, and of course, our studio hosts, InterDigital. You can catch all our coverage of Mobile World Congress on the website, telecomtv.com. Thank you very much. Goodbye.